Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do an example of a two-dimensional array using C Sharp in Visual Studio. So here's the agenda what we're going to look at. We're going to create a two-dimensional array of integers. We're going to then work with nested for loops and then also we're going to create a custom method that will help us print this 2D array. So this is a perfect example of using 2D arrays if you're somewhat beginning at programming in C Sharp. My name is Shad Sluder, and I'm a professor of computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. And so in all my videos, I welcome you to come along and look over my shoulder and see what we're learning. I'm trying to make students into professional programmers. So if you like this kind of thing, subscribe and follow along with some of the channel uh, playlists that I have here because we go from beginner to advanced in making applications and giving you the opportunity for a career. So the first thing we want to do is ask the user two questions. I want to ask them how tall will the grid be? And that's the number of rows that will be printed. And then how many, how wide it will be? How many columns are we going to make? And so the user is going to be able to enter both of those numbers. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the value for the number of rows. So right after I ask the question, I'm going to assign an integer of rows. Then I'm going to get this value from the console read line function. So this will ask the user to type something and press return. Now you can see that there are some errors here already. So if I hover over the message that is underlined, it says that I cannot implicitly convert type string to int. So that means the input is a string and we're going to save it into the value of rows, which is a integer. And so there's one way we can fix this. It's called parsing. So I'm going to type in int and then type in parse and then I'm going to surround the parentheses around the console read line. So let's go ahead and cut that out and paste it in between the parentheses and now the parse command is supposed to take whatever the user types and convert it to an integer for them. And so that will give us the value of the rows. Now the columns is almost the same so I'm just going to copy and paste the, the code that I wrote for getting the rows and then change the value of rows to calls. And now we should see two questions and two inputs. Now I'm going to make a variable called grid and this will be a two dimensional array. So it's of type integer and then I'm going to put square brackets with a comma which means there's going to be an X and a Y coordinate or a rows and a columns number. And now I'm going to declare that as a new array of integers. And I'm going to use the values of rows and columns to be the size of our two-dimensional array. So think of this as if you were creating a game board, such as chess or checkers, and you decided to use eight rows and eight columns. That would give you 64 squares. So this grid is whatever the dimensions are that the user inputs. And so eight by eight would be a typical playing board. Next, I'm going to ask the user to fill the board. So I'm going to ask a bunch of questions and put, assign each square of the board the value that the user input. So first of all, next I'm going to create a nested for loop. So two loops, one inside the other. The first loop, I'll just type four and then press tab tab. Change the input value from I to the word row. And then I'm going to go from row equals zero to row is less than rows. So there's a difference between row and rows. The same thing I'll do with columns. So col is the counter and col is less than cols. So col is the short for columns. Next I'm going to print a message that says which square on the board that we're filling in right now. So we're going to say grid and then curly bracket 0 comma curly bracket 1 means we're going to put two numbers in there. So the first number that we're going to place is the value row and the second one is column. So we're going to substitute where it says 0 that will become the row value and this curly bracket 1 will be the second value. So now each time we print one of these row and column messages I'm going to ask the user to input something. So they'll just type in a number. And we will parse that number into a value that is saved in the grid. So remember the grid is a grid of like 64 numbers that contains integers. Lastly, what we're going to do is print the board. So we're going to go again through nested for loops to go through each item in the, in the grid. So this time I'm going to use 
R for a counter variable. I could have used row again, but I'll just choose R. So we're going to go from R is less or is equal to zero to less than rows. Then we'll do the second loop, which is for columns. And then inside of those two for loops, we're going to do a console write, not write line. So we want to do a write, so that way the uh, the text just continues on on the same line. And then we're going to print the value of whatever as that grid at location r comma c. And then just for good measure to make it readable, I'll put a space in as well. Now after I print one row, I want to then start a new line. And then the next row will start on a separate line. So it'll be a square when we print it. I think we got it all. Let's see if it works by running the program. All right, the application looks like it's running without any errors. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. How tall will the row be, it says. I'm going to do four. And how wide will it be? Let's try five. And now it's time to fill it up. So let's put in some numbers. So I can just put in a digit. I'm going to use single digits for each of these, and I'm randomly assigning them. So uh, it will print nicely if you don't have double digits. So keep everything nine or less. And then the print will start in a look like a, a good square. And so there we are. We got to the end, and it printed for us. So it told us which number we were putting in at each row and column location. And then finally, we print just the square of numbers. So check it to make sure that it got all the rows and columns correctly. And then you've got yourself a two-dimensional array. Now there's one more thing that I'm going to show you. So this function here, or this section here, is really kind of a piece of code that could be repeated. Watch what this does if I do a right click. And I'm going to select Quick Actions and Refactorings. And then I'm going to select the first item, which says Extract Method. So what does Extract Method do? Well, let's click it and find out. So I'm going to click right here in this little blue area. And it's going to create a new method. That's the name of it. Well, I can rename it. So I'm going to call it Print Grid. That makes more sense. And you can see that Print Grid is now listed here. And then the uh, function, or the method down here, is in its own declaration. So here's what we could do. I could take this print grid and now copy and paste it up in the for loop. So now that means that every time I ask the user for a new value for row and column, I could print the grid if I wanted to. So this will print the grid multiple times. Let's see what that looks like. All right, we're up and running again. I'm going to make this smaller, so I'm going to do three and two for my values. And so now it says time to fill the grid. So let's put some numbers in. You can see that I put in a 9, and the other numbers come out as 0. So let's put in some more numbers. So let's try a 4. Now you can see the second value. And so the print grid is being called every time I enter a new number. And so it looks like I'm almost done here. So I will fill in the grid, and we finally got the final result. If you would like to see another lesson on how jagged arrays work and how they're different than regular two-dimensional arrays, I have a video for you there. If you'd like to learn how to program some simple games in C Sharp, then take a look at the playlist called Beginning C Sharp, and you'll see some things that will make you a better programmer. So welcome to class, and please subscribe.